Hudson Soft made some amazing games on the NES. We had Hudson's Adventure Island, Felix the Cat, Nuts and Milk, Bomber. Hold on! Nuts and milk? What? Well, there were so many games that came out in Japan that we never got here in the United States. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here talking about the Hudson Soft games that came out in Japan, but we never saw them right here in the good old US of A. And probably the United of Kingdom too. Is that? All right. And really quickly, these arcade scented air fresheners smell like menthols, a gumball machine, wood paneling, and spilt coke. All at the same time. And also taking you back to high school with these high school cafeteria scented air fresheners. If they're not in my shop, these are coming soon. I got my homebrews available online. And I even wrote a book about breakfast cereal of the 80s and 90s. Check out the Shopify link in my description and let's check out these games. Starting off with Fornin Uchi Mahjong. Well, I don't know what else to tell you about the fact that it's just Mahjong. Came out early for the uh, Famicom. Man, there was one time in the late 90s that I actually knew how to play this. And for no reason other than the fact that I didn't touch a Mahjong game for like 25 years. I completely forgot. I'll have to re-remember how to do it. Anyway, that's the first game that came out by Hudson Soft in Japan that we never got here in the U.S. And for all the right reasons. Ain't nobody knows how to play Mahjong here. Then again, checkerboards always came with backgammon and no one knows how to play backgammon either. When we looked at Nuts and Milk briefly, yeah, 1984, can you believe it? This game came out a couple years in Japan before the U.S. was even widely available here. And if any game screams black box game for the NES, this could have been a black box game for the NES. Now, they probably would have changed the name, I would think so. But nice and cute, you play as this little cute little pink, kind of Kirby-ish looking orb thingy, trying to avoid the blue guy. And when I say the blue guy, I don't mean blue meanie. And once you collect all the fruit, then you can go in the door and uh, rescue the person. I don't know. Is it, is it a rescue thing? Is it just a like, hey, I'm going to go out and do some errands and come back? I don't know. It's kind of fun, kind of addicting. It's, it's that early black box NES style game. I think you'll like it. Binary Land came out in Japan, and I am completely fascinated with this game. I, I really enjoy it to a point. <laughs> um, you control both at the same time. When you push left, they go right. When you go up, you both go up and down. But left and right, you do the mirrored image. But the levels of where you are are not mirrored. So you also have to use that strategy to go through and, you know, find out where you go. Because at the very end, you have to collect the heart at the exact same time. You can't just go to it and then the other person follows behind. You have to hit it right at the same time. Pretty interesting game with Binary Land. Real-time action adventure. How can you go wrong with Challenger? And Challenger, despite its looks and its weird kind of frame ratey, you know, it, kind of, it kind of scrolls and animates a little bit the same way a CD Connection does. I think it's a really fun game, especially for its time. It's just kind of an action, jumpy, thing in a bobby. A couple of different gameplay styles in this as well, where you have like this first part where like you're in the train, and then later on you kind of have an overworld idea here too. Yeah, Challenger for the Famicom. You might look out for it. It's actually pretty fun. I'm adding Puyon to the list just briefly because it's from Konami and Hudson Soft. Now this game was in my Konami video as well, but I don't know if it's like Konami developed it and then Hudson Soft produced it or the other way around or they both pitched in and said, hey, let's go in together on this project. You know, maybe the original was from Konami in the arcade and then, you know, they had Final Say, but then Hudson Soft made it for the NES. I have no idea. I'm glad they did though, because it was a fun arcade game. It was this uh, mommy pig uh, saving the baby pigs from the wolves that were coming down on balloons. <laughs> Ninja Hattori-kun. Well, this is a simple style platformer that you play as this kind of dopey looking ninja. The fun thing about this game is you can find this game for super cheap. Anytime I see uh, Famicom games at a convention, where they're just like, you know, like on the super inexpensive side, almost guaranteed I'll find a copy of this. And it's actually not a bad game and you do not need to know Japanese to play it. So it's one of those cheaper games you can find for the Famicom. I know Famicom games usually run less expensive than most NES games, but you can find this game for cheap and it's actually not bad. They made a Doraemon game. Of course they made a Doraemon game for the Famicom. Whoa, trippy. Doraemon is one of those anime characters. Even before I got into like importing things, I would always see Doraemon stuff. Doraemon is like the godfather of cute kids anime that also expanded into like stuffed animals and blankets and I'm sure they had pajamas. Tons of video games along the way. I've never seen an episode of Doraemon but man I recognize this character because it was on everything. Momotaro Densetsu which is the adventures of Peach Boy. Is that basically what it translates to? I don't know if adventures is the right word. The destiny of the Peach Boy I guess. <laughs> Well, Momotaro is that classic story of, you know, elderly couple finds this giant peach inside as his boy. And this game, at the end of the day, is a turn-based RPG style game. Just so you know. I'm sure it's translated. I'm sure there's a translation out there. Help me out here. Takahashi Meijin no Bug et Honey. Is that right? Now, the Takamaji Meijin games, we know them as Adventure Island games. 
But in Japan, that's what they called them, as far as I know, anyway. And you play as this kind of cute, flying around little bug thingy. And you'll find a bunch of these invisible hit points that drop these things that turn into a breakout style game. As much as I wanted this to be another Adventure Island style game, you play this breakout style game more than anything else in this entire game. Because once you do this, that's when you can collect the password, and once you get all the things for your password, you can move on to the next stage. But there is still some flying around and some, there's like some, you know, boss-ish battles and stuff like that. But the fun thing about this game is that it features, as we know, as Master Higgins here, but it features the dude from Adventure Island. So they even have some elements in this game where you play as that Adventure Island dude in a game that maybe you didn't realize also had this Adventure Island dude. A little crossover. Well, I can't, I, would you call it a crossover? I mean, is this here? He's this there. Seiri Gari, is that how you pronounce this game? Well, it looks pretty cool. I like I like the games that look like this with the, uh, you know, super anime style graphics and all that. This guy looks super creepy. So it seems to be like a text adventure style game. This is a game I wasn't familiar with, but one of those, you know, look at this, talk to this person, go here, do this on that. Yeah, there you go. Yukuriman World, Gekito Sei Sinchi. I probably butchered that. And here we go. It's another uh, kind of RPG-ish game as you go around and you can look at the houses and look at the land and look at the stuff. <laughs> yeah, again, when you see the games like this and when you realize, okay, there's there's a lot going on here, uh, it wouldn't be just as easy to translate and put out in the U.S. Of course, it would be just as easy to translate and put out in the U.S., but sometimes you're just like, ah, you know what, we'll just... You know, we'll, we'll just leave this in Japan. It's like, all right, all right you, you do your thing. Does this guy look familiar at all to you? Probably not. No, but does this guy look familiar at all to you? Well, if you played Keith Courage and Alpha Zone on the TurboGrafx-16, this is what they would call Keith Courage and Alpha Zone on the NES, although it's a completely different style game. Mashin Iuden Wataru Gaiden. Sure, whatever. It looks like what's about to be an RPG style game, which, I mean, yeah, kind of. But the fun of it is when you get into a battle, then it turns into a kind of side view action game where you're jumping, you're slashing your sword, uh, you're blowing up because you shouldn't be in this area already. Anyway, very cool. Oh, more anime style games here. Super Mobotaro Densetsu. This game is a board game, and we didn't get... We could have had more board game style games for the NES, I think. We had a couple of them. We had games that were like Anticipation, which was fine. We had Pictionary, which was, you know, whatever. But it would have been nice to have more games like this, I think. I'm not, I have no clue what I'm doing in this game. <laughs> but it did come out in Japan. Of course it did. We also had Momotaro Densetsu Gaiden. <laughs> yeah, another Momotaro Densetsu game. Boy, they really capitalized on this character there. Uh, looks to be another RPG style game. I'm not gonna, I'm capturing my own footage. I'm not gonna play too much of this because I honestly don't know what I'm, what's going on here. But it did come out in Japan. Didn't come out in the US. I promise you that. One game that should have, I wish it did. 1994 was what we would call Adventure Island 4. Now we had Hudson's Adventure Island. We had Adventure Island 2. We had Adventure Island 3. This one is Adventure Island 4. And this Adventure Island game plays more like the Wonder Boy games, the Monster World style games, Metroidvania style. You have your whole area, you have your whole map. You can backtrack and come around and, you know, upgrade your thing and go over here and do this other thing over there. Man, I wish this game came out in the U.S. It didn't, though. There is a translation version of this available, so if you're looking to play this in English, it is not hard to find. There are so many remakes and so many rehashes of all these Wonder Boy games, all these Monster World games. Where is my Hudson's Adventure Island collection that has all the games, including this one, in English? It has all the, you know, the other stuff, too. Everyone always talks about, like, the Wonder Boy games and the Monster World. Those games are fine. Those games are fine, and I guess at the end of the day, those games are the OG. However, these Adventure Island games were the ones I grew up with. And I'd love to see them kind of rehash or come out again or something. I also covered Konami games that came out in Japan. Make sure you check out that video. Thank you so much. I'm going to do more of these videos coming up soon. There's a lot of games that came out in Japan that we never got here in the U.S. And maybe it opens your eyes a little bit on what else is out there. Especially if you grew up with the NES and you're like, well, I played them all. You haven't played these.